Hello, and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, looking at all things fintech. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker. And with me is Iggy Vassi, who is founder and CEO of Servest, which uses earth science, artificial intelligence, to try and mitigate the uh, risks around climate change. Iggy, thanks so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure joining you, Joy. Thank you very much. I think there's a growing consensus that companies should be reporting sort of uh, climate related uh, metrics and stuff in their company reports. You know, why is this becoming such an issue today? There's a broad and growing consensus that we need to decarbonize. Um, and that's been driven by government policy, things like the Paris Agreement. Also, companies are going uh, alone. Uh, companies like Microsoft, for instance, have just announced a very ambitious decarbonization strategy. I think there's a growing recognition that climate is unlike other risks, unlike financial risk, political risk, economic risk. It's very complicated to measure and often it's sort of said to be non-linear. It means that studying the past doesn't necessarily reveal what's going to happen um, in the future. So I, I think it's reached a point where there's growing concern. If you saw the earlier Economic uh, World Forum report this year, all the long-term risks were all associated with climate. Now, it's very difficult for asset managers, banks, even companies who have got a, a real strong tapestry of assets peppered all over the world to understand, well, am I at risk? What's going to happen to my assets? What's going to happen to my valuations and to my cash flows? So. I think um, emerging frameworks like TCFD have given a broad framework to say, well, how should we think about these risks? How should we think about these risks from a physical point of view in terms of um, impacts from extreme weather events? And also, how should we think about transition risk, i.e. sudden changes to policy, which may mean that all my productive assets will no longer be valuable. My dividend flows will change very um, quickly. So there's real legitimate need to start worrying about climate change. I think both physical risk, transition risk are really pushing people to understand what's the forward risk of climate change? And are my assets today, are they valued correctly? Have they been truly discounted based on the risk? Now, these risks are very hard to model, Joy. These are not risks that uh, we can just get off the shelf, plug it into a model. So orthodox risk management is also changing as well. It has to accommodate for these new types of risks. So how does Servest actually help organizations really um, you know, predict these climate-related risks? We use the power of machine learning and artificial intelligence to say, can we measure, can we measure what's going to happen over a period of time? Now, the big challenge for us and for many companies and for many governments in the world is most of the science that you need to understand is really in the domain of physical sciences. And all those physical sciences, of course, sit in different silos. And everyone produces scientific results which are at different spatial scales, temporal scales, different units, different geographies. So we're saying, can artificial intelligence bring all these different data streams together, all these physical sciences and really understand what is likely to happen knowing what's going to happen to the physical state of the climate not just the the approximate regressions on past history so you have to combine if you like physics and statistical science together then we allow people to understand what's already happened to your assets so the first thing we do with many of our larger clients is just to measure what's happened historically because we're often surprised that people don't understand what's already embedded in their risk then we can start looking at things like forecasting. We can start looking at simulations under different scenarios. Um, for instance, if we could say, well, what if temperatures rose 5% faster? What if water tables fell 15% faster? How are your cash flows impacted? How are your valuations impacted? And how is the integrity of your business performance going to change over time, given these results, right? So how do you think banks could really play an active role um, in shaping the standards that need to be put in place in order to really address you know, climate risk and investment decisions? I think banks and broadly capital markets and finance are the ultimate pivotal players uh, because of their distribution capacity into everything that we do from financing factories, financing forestry, rivers, supply chains, government buildings. We ultimately need to, they need to become climate literate also. They need to understand that there's value at risk here, whether it's on their equity side, their debt side, um, their sort of wealth wealth management side. 
I think it's no point banks in the future saying, well, eight to 10% of our assets are in ESG and sustainable finance. Ultimately, all finance needs to be sustainable. If we are to achieve a net zero economy and hit those goals longer term, we can't just move 10% of our capital into looking at decarbonization projects, for instance. Everything has to move over time. So it's actually a great opportunity for banks to start insisting in their lending practices, how, what is your plan, Joy, for decarbonization? How, what is your five-year plan? What is your 10-year plan? Because, be, because between now and then, they are sitting, the bank is sitting on a lot of transition risk. It's sitting on a lot of climate risk, for instance, right? So they can insist. They can start thinking about conditional pricing. They can think about different basis points for high carbon, uh, moderate carbon. We actually saw something very interesting after the Paris Agreement. Um, I think the overall volume of lending that went into high carbon assets actually fell. Um, which again tells you, if you have the right policies, the market will respond accordingly. So banks offer the greatest opportunity for us to think about how do we decarbonize and how do we send climate intelligence into our portfolios? Because then by extension, you are basically using finances as an instrument to decarbonize the economy. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Ziggy. Thanks for joining me this week. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much.